activate. Hey everybody, it's the Tech Help Dude. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play PlayStation 2 games on your PC. Uh, in my last video, I showed you how to play PlayStation 1 games. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play PlayStation 2 games. So the first thing you want to go do is go ahead and go to your web browser. Go to PCSX2.net and click on downloads up in here. Uh, you're going to want to download the installer, which is about 12 megabytes, so it's really small. Another thing you want to download, and this is very important, it will not work without this, is the PCSX2 BIOS file, which you can just Google PS2 BIOS or, you know, PCSX2 BIOS, and you can download it from uh, any of these places. Um, you know, I mean, there's, there's hundreds of places you can actually download it from. After it installs the program, it's going to put a file in your documents called PCSX2. You're going to open that up, go to your BIOS that's inside of here, and you're going to put all of your BIOS files that you download from some website uh, into this folder right here. Once the installer finishes downloading, you're going to see uh, this icon on your desktop right here. And uh, you're going to want to just click on it. The first time you open it, uh, it's going to run you through a quick configuration. Leave everything at the default. I'm just going to run through uh, some of the emulation settings and uh, you know controller settings and whatnot. Before you even think about running your game, uh, you got to figure out um, what kind of game am I going to be running. Are you going to be running an ISO file or are you going to be running an actual disk that you're going to put in your disk drive? Go to configure and you hit plugin slash BIOS file. You want to click on this plugins button up here. You want to make sure that your BIOS files are all in your documents slash PCSX2. If you refresh the list, you'll see that there should be uh, some in here go ahead and just click on the most recent one for whatever country you're in and click apply um, Then you're going to go to plugins and you want to make most most of these you just want to leave alone just leave them the same um, except for one uh, CD VD uh, you want to hit configure on just go ahead and leave it under as gigahertz uh, you don't really need to change it to the Linux or whatever click configure next to that and uh, by default, it says no disk. Um, so if you're going to actually be running a disk out of the disk drive, you're going to click E or whatever disk drive you're going to be putting it in uh, and click OK and click Apply. So now go to Configure and go to Emulation Settings. One thing you're going to really want to do is turn on speed hacks. Uh, they're not recommended by the program designer, which is kind of weird, but I found that they're uh, beyond useful. I'm going to show you the difference between actually having them on and turning them off. I have Lego Batman in my disk drive, so I'm going to hit boot CDVD full. I'm going to click that. It's going to start running the disk. Uh, you'll probably be able to hear it in your disk drive. You're going to see the ever familiar loading screen. And then the PlayStation 2. Um, you can make this full screen if you want or minimize it or whatever. I'm not sure if this will actually show on the video, so if it doesn't, I'm sorry. Um, so as you can see, it's loading LEGO Batman. I have my PlayStation 3 controller actually plugged in via USB to my computer uh, using uh, Motion Joy, which is actually a really cool program that allows you to use your PlayStation 3 controller as a controller for uh, your PC gaming. So that's really cool. So right now I'm going to load the state that I have. Um, so as you can see, uh, this is without speed hacks on, and it's it's literally really slow. Uh, you know, it's basically slow motion. Um, I don't know if you can hear the audio. It sounds really uh, sounds really really terrible, actually. Uh, it sounds like uh, dying robots or something like that. It's actually quite disturbing. So I'm actually going to close it because it's kind of freaking me out. So uh, you want to go to configure emulation settings, speed hacks turn them on. Um, I know they're not recommended, but I have mine all the way up <laughs> um, and I have pretty much all of them enabled. Um, you click apply for that. And now I'm going to run it again. I'm going to continue running it. And so you can see that it's running so much smoother. Um, it's literally uh, like, I mean, it's almost real time. It's actually running about as smooth as it normally would. Um, as you can see, there's kind of some weird glitching on the screen right here, these weird black circles, uh, those aren't in every level, that's just in this level, this is the Bat Cave or whatever. 
but uh, it, it actually runs completely smooth, which is uh, honestly pretty surprising because I don't have a super high-end computer, um, but enabling the speed hacks does work. Um, you might get some weird glitches or something, uh, but it, it works mostly for uh, pretty much a lot of the games. So what you, you want to keep in mind that this is not going to work with every game. I tried to play Killzone, the original, and it, didn't, it wouldn't even boot um, at all. So, uh, you know, and sometimes the speed hacks don't work with every game, so you might actually have to disable them and then try uh, the game again. But uh, if, if the game works and it's just running really slow, I'd turn speed hacks on if I were you. Uh, the rest of the stuff, I kind of just leave alone unless you know what you're doing. You can change the aspect ratio from 4.3 to 16.9. I don't know why you would want to play anything in 4.3. It looks really stupid. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should say for this video. Um, now the audio is still going to kind of be weird even if it's running perfectly. Um, but I personally, I'd rather have a clear picture instead of a great audio. But uh, it's, it's pretty surprising that it actually runs uh, really smoothly. Um, I thought that was really cool. So uh, that's it for this video. If you guys have any comments, just leave them in the comment box below. And I'd really appreciate dropping a comment because I like reading them. If you could like this video, that would actually help me out a lot. So uh, check out PCXX2 Emulator. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So uh, peace out.